In this video, we're going to cover scroll tracking with Google Tag Manager. And this is useful if you have a content website or if you just want to track how users are engaging with your website, especially if you don't have a heat mapping tool or you just want to consolidate all your web analytics data in one place. So this is done by leveraging the built-in scroll depth trigger, along with a couple built-in variables with GTM. So the first thing you want to do is when you're in GTM, if you're looking at the overview page, click on variables, click on configure, and then scroll down to scrolling section and you want to make sure that you have all of the scrolling variables checked off so scroll depth threshold scroll depth units and scroll direction so make sure those are marked and then you can click out of there and you'll notice if you scroll down on your variable list that these data layer variables are added to your list so now we'll go back to our tags, let's, let's click on tags and click on new to create a new tag. We'll click on Google Analytics, Universal Analytics, and change the track type to event. We can name this GA event scroll tracking tag and for the event category, you can name it scroll depth. For the event action, here what I'd like to do is use the page variable. I'll use the page URL, just the whole page URL. And then for the label, what I want in this field is the scroll depth threshold. And then I can just add a percent symbol at the end. So now we'll scroll down to the trigger and click on the plus to create a new trigger. Click on, click anywhere in this trigger configuration area to add the scroll depth trigger. So this is the trigger that we saw at the beginning of the video and depending on how your page is set up you can decide which scroll depth you want whether you want it to be vertical or horizontal horizontal may only be applicable if if the users are on mobile but uh, it just depends on how your web page is set up so let's enable vertical scroll depths and you can choose between percentages or pixels. And if you choose pixels, then you'll want to know how, how long, you know, the height and the depth of, or sorry, the height and the width of your page. But percentages just makes it easier. So generally, I like to create, I like to include percentages for 25, 50, 75, and 100. but you can decide what you want to set for your percentages. Now, one thing to consider is if you don't want to count minimal, minimal scroll depths, for example, if your page might be shorter, then you might want to remove some of these lower percentages, 25% maybe, uh, depending on how long your page is or the height of your page, if you want to, you might want to consider removing 50 as well, but that's up to you. So we'll roll with 25, 50, 75, and 100. And we'll call this, we'll just call this scroll depth trigger. Just keep it simple. Save it. And now 
we'll just click back into this tag configuration section. And another thing you want to consider is the non-interaction hit. So that means this, whatever you set this to, it will affect the bounce rate. So right now, this non-interaction hit, it's set to false. That means this will count, Google Analytics will count this as an interaction. If, if the engagement from the user matches the trigger, if it fires the trigger, matches the condition for the trigger, then this will affect the bounce rate. That means the user or Google Analytics will interpret that as the user engaging with the website and will count that as an interaction. So that means Google Analytics will not count this as a bounce if they if they only view that single page and do nothing else but just scroll. If you have a content site, you can use scroll tracking and keep this non-interaction hit field set to false. That way your bounce rate metric will speak more accurately to the engagement of the users. Let's revisit the scroll depth threshold percentages. So click on the trigger for scroll depth and you can see the percentages we have 25, 50, 75, and 100. There's no sense in adding zero to the percentages because whenever a page loads, then this trigger will automatically fire because even without the user scrolling, the page will always be at at least 0% scroll depth. So that won't tell you much and you can just leave zero out. Now, you'll want to consider for your own website whether you want to add percentages, lower percentages, for example, five, 10, even 25%. You wanna figure out what your minimal scroll depth percent would be to, to say, okay, a user has scrolled this far, then we'll count that as an engaged visit, an engaged session. There are some other considerations that you want to think about for your website. There's infinite scroll pages where if a user scrolls to the bottom of the page, then more content will load each time the user does so. For that scenario, an element visibility trigger would be more appropriate. Also, if your pages use anchor links to specific sections on, on the page. So if you have an anchor link that goes to a section of the page that is 75% down the page, just be aware that the trigger will fire for each of the previous percentages. So that means 50 and 25% as well. And it will send events for each of those percentages to Google Analytics. If you have a single page web app, that means if you're using GTM for page tracking, you're using a history change trigger. You also need to consider this for scroll tracking because when a user navigates to another URL, the page doesn't actually load a new page. So the history change trigger tells GA that the user actually navigated to a new URL. So that's something you want to consider. That's something you may need to group your scroll tracking, your scroll depth trigger with. Make sure you configure the Google Analytics settings field to the settings that you want. We're going to use this GA UA settings variable that I've already configured. So that sends it to the correct GA property. We'll save this and we'll test this out. Let's make sure we grab the correct URL. 
go back here and paste it in the field, click on connect, wait for our page to load, and let's click on this page right here. And then we can see how far we're scrolled down and let's scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page. So we're expecting tags to fire for all four percentages that we've set. So it looks like scroll tracking has fired eight times. And that is correct because on the first page, there wasn't any more, any further we could scroll down. So it would fire, that tag would fire for all the percentages, 25, 50, 75, 100. And then for the second page, since we did scroll all the way down, we would expect the tag to fire for each of those percentages as well. So eight makes sense. Now, if we click on, for example, the last scroll depth that fired, we can see the value. So we can switch this from names, display variables from names to values. And if we click on show more, we see the page that we navigated to that we were on and we see the value for event label is 100. So we can click on another scroll depth event and we can see that even though a data layer, there was a data layer push for this event, no scroll event tracking tags were fired. So if we click on that tag, we can see that it didn't fire because it didn't match all the conditions. And we see that the label is actually 90%, which was not one of the percentages that we configured in our scroll depth trigger. But if we click on this one, the 19th event, and click on the tag that did fire, it shows us 75% for this page. Click on 18, another one, another tag fires, 50%. And then on 17, the 17th event, 25% that fired. So if we go to the home page, we see the same. And if you click through for this scroll depth event, no scroll tracking tag fired. But for this one, it did for 100%. Scroll to the 8th, 75%. Click on the 7th scroll depth event, 50%. And then the sixth scroll depth event, 25%. Let's go to our real time reporting in our GA property. So we want to make sure we're choosing the correct UA property. Wait for it to load. And there's our scroll depth event for each of our pages. So we have eight events that fired. And if we click, into these events then we can see each of the each of the event labels and the values there so we have eight total events that fired for each of the percentages that we just talked about for GA4 you might have scroll tracking automatically configured the way you can check that is Go into your admin settings and click on data streams under the property column. And you can see what enhanced measurement is picking up already. So it looks like scrolls has been picked up. We can actually check the real time report for, for this GA4 property as well. Click on real time. And if we scroll down, we see our scroll events here. So that's how you configure scroll tracking with Google Tag Manager. Let me know in the comments your considerations for scroll tracking. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.